hey guys welcome back to the channel Chopante here and i'm back with another video and in today's video we are going to be doing something a little bit different you know it's called faithful friday we are going to be studying god's word studying current events that affect christians as a community and so you guys know that i like to talk about subjects like that and there is a topic that i want to talk about today that we really really need to get on talk, talk topic about so here we go it is climate change and covid or covid and climate change let me figure out how to get this on the screen for you guys um so yeah we're gonna be talking about that today and um i'm gonna switch my camera real quick because y'all already know <laughs> sorry i'm being really goofy but we're gonna talk about covid and climate change and how they're related i don't know if you guys have seen any commercials or videos where they talk about how covid and climate change kind of go hand in hand covid is caused by climate change climate change is happening because of covid it's a bunch of madness madness i tell you but yeah so we're going to be discussing that we are going to be talking about common questions that people have there are a lot of summits that are coming up um, that have actually been happening for a while now i really didn't know that because i've never been into climate change like that because you know it's just never been my thing you know so <laughs> We're going to talk about what COP26 is. Uh, we're going to talk about the G20 uh, summit that is happening very soon. We're going to talk about how COVID affects climate. We're going to talk about how it affects us as Christians, as I stated before, and where it's all headed in the end. And if y'all can hear that squeaking, that is my chair, y'all. I don't know what's going on, but we're going to go through it anyway. Okay, so we are going to discuss what cop 26 is right now i'm just gonna move myself over <laughs> but uh cop stands for a conference of parties this is a summit where leaders from all over the world meet and discuss climate change um and this conference actually has been held since 1995 every single year except for last year due to COVID. and so they also have a summit excuse me um called pre-cop which will be held in Italy and there's 35 different countries that will attend and they will discuss things in secret. And I want y'all to go Google that because, you know, from my understanding, that's what I understood, but I'm not going to say that that's what it said. So Google what pre-cop is, but it is happening uh, September 30th to October 2nd in Milan, Italy. So another thing is things that are happening after uh, COP26, COP26, if you will, um, a month after COP26 is the G20 summit, which is another climate change summit. Um, and that also will be held in Italy on October the 30th through the 31st. Now, if you guys know anything about those dates, it's not just Halloween, which we don't celebrate as Christians anyway, but it's not Halloween. It is actually the anniversary anniversary of the Protestants Reformation. So for them to be actually holding this summit, it's so disrespectful, y'all. Like, I just want to say that <laughs> it's disrespectful. Um, holding it in Italy on the anniversary of the Protestant Reformation is just, it just speaks volumes to me. Um, so we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going because it gets better. Um, I have a video of, um, I can't think of his name right now, but he is a person that knows more about COP26 than I do. And so I will let you hear from him. Firstly, secure global net zero by mid-century and keep 1.5 degrees within reach. Here, countries are being asked to come forward with ambitious 2030 emission reductions targets through their nationally determined contributions that align with reaching net zero by the middle of the century. In order to meet these stretching targets, countries will need to accelerate the phase out of coal, curtail deforestation, speed up the switch to electric vehicles and encourage investment in renewables. Secondly, adapt to protect communities and natural habitats. 
as the climate is already changing and is expected that it will continue to change even if we reduce our emissions and will still have its devastating effects on climate and on our habitats. At COP26, it is intended that countries will need to work together to enable and encourage actions for countries affected by climate change, such as the protection and restoration of ecosystems, and to build defences, warning systems and resilient infrastructure and agriculture to avoid losses of homes, livelihoods and even lives. Thirdly, mobilise finance. To deliver on the first two goals, developed countries must make good on their promise to mobilise at least $100 billion in climate finance per year. Here, international financial institutions must play their part by working towards unleashing the trillions of dollars of private and public sector finance required to secure global net zero. And finally, work together to deliver. With recognition that countries can only rise to the challenges of the climate crisis by working together. At COP26, it will include sub-goals which will finalise the Paris rulebook, the detailed rules to make the Paris Agreement operational, and to accelerate action to tackle the climate crisis through collaboration between governments, businesses and civil society. And for greater public engagement, as there is likely to be an overwhelming public response to the summit and increasingly pressing calls for global action. This includes increasingly vocal young people with a specific note of the Youth for Climate event being planned for the pre-COP in Italy. Further information on the issue. So y'all saw further information. I just didn't be doing that. Sorry, y'all. Okay, let me get myself together because I don't understand <laughs> what is going on. Okay, there we go. <laughs> you guys saw it there. Um, what the COP26 goals are, and it's a lot. Working together, reducing emissions, sitting at home. It's a lot. I don't know if you guys have heard of um, Laudato C. But the Pope actually made this encyclical, I want to say a few years back, um, and it is a seven year plan to basically uh, regenerate the earth, give the give the earth a sabbatical, if you will. And so I'm going to show you this video where they have the young people, because if you heard his message, they want the young people to go out there and basically fight for the earth because it's their generation um it's no longer our generation anymore and i'm young um but they want the youth to take over so i'm going to show you guys this video really quickly um and there's a lot of things that is disturbing about it now mind you i don't think it is anything wrong with trying to um take care of the earth um i don't think it's anything wrong with that but as Christians, we know that this earth, ha earth has to pass away. And so a lot of this stuff is very um, contradi contradictory to the Bible. And that is where I have the issue. So let's do Sometimes I feel like my heart is breaking. Like we are destroying the very things we should be caring for the most. Like we are taking far too much from the earth. I wonder what kind of world we'll leave for future generations. I believe that even one person can change the world and that if we listen to our hearts and listen to each other together even little things and little changes can make a big difference we are stronger together than apart 
and can overcome any obstacles. So join us as we care for our common home. So like I said, it's no issue with, you know, wanting to take her to take care of the earth and all of that. Um, but like I said, when it's contradictory <laughs> to what the Bible says, that's where it becomes the issue of um, not being not being for the common good, if you will. So I know I keep saying, if you will, y'all, that's for lack of better words. I don't I don't have them. I'm, I'm at a loss for words, obviously, <laughs> but um, common good common home yes we all live on this planet right um but we all don't have the same goal we don't we don't all have the same beliefs so like i said before we know that the earth will pass away so that we can have a new heaven and a new earth the fact that um christians are trying to preserve the earth is kind it kind of defeats the purpose it's as if you don't you wouldn't you don't want Jesus to come back um and I say that all in love I don't say that to be disrespectful or anything like that but I just don't understand I don't understand it well I'll just say that so I'll show you guys this article um about 10 myths and this is put up put out by the Catholic climates movement so anything that is um, on a Catholic website or has anything to do with Catholicism on a Catholic platform, it is all approved by the Pope. And so this um, actual article came out on October 27, 2020. Um, and it talks about 10 myths about caring for creation. Um, so we are going to, I'm going to show you guys that. So this is, again, the global Catholic climate movement. And there are 10 myths um, that they that we talk about on here. <laughs> says the climate has always changed. Science scientists disagree about the signs of the climate crisis. The average person can't do anything. Catholics should not worry about climate change. The Bible says that humans are dominion over everything else. There's no way to know how much the climate is changing. Pope Francis is the first pope to bring up caring for creation. Climate models are not accurate. The world cannot stop the climate crisis and it's hopeless. Now, these are myths. Myths are lies, cor correct? I think they're lies, right? Okay, so we are going to read this. And all of this stuff came from Laudato Si. This is what LS means, Laudato Si, which I told you guys is the encyclical that the pope wrote a few years back um so we're just gonna read it and so this says the climate has always changed remember that they said that these are myths so the climate has changed throughout history but scientists say the climate change we're seeing now across the world is caused by human beings putting more heat trapping greenhouse gases into the atmosphere now i've always been taught that a half truth is a lie it's a whole lie right um, the fact that it says the climate has always changed is a myth, but then it says the climate has changed throughout history. I don't see how that's a myth. <laughs> I see that as factual. It has changed. You can't say that it has not changed because it has changed. Um, then the next thing is scientists degree disagree about the science of climate crisis of the climate crisis. It goes on to say about 97% of climate scientists agree on the science of climate crisis. So if 97% agree, what happens to the other 3% that disagrees? That means that scientists disagree. So I feel like it was just it's just a bunch of baloney. Like that's literally how I feel about it. <laughs> excuse, excuse my language. But yeah, it's a bunch of baloney. Um, so I'm not even gonna read all of this, but you can go onto this website is Catholic climate movement dot global. Um, but we're going to read, we're going to get into number five because we're talking about the Bible and it says the Bible says that humans are dominion over everything else, which gives us permission to do as we please on earth. Um, the Bible does not say that it gives us permission to do as we please on earth, 
but it does say that we have dominion. So I feel like they took the scripture and kind of twisted it. So it's this Genesis 128. And I'm going to read it from the Bible. Um, since I have it right here. But it says. And God blessed them. And God said unto them. Actually, I'm going to read from verse 27. Um, so God created man in his own image. And in the image of God created he, he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And then it goes down to tell you about what God gave them to eat and what God gave the animals to eat. Now, as you read down here, um, Pope Francis says that we must forcefully reject the notion that our being created in God's image and given dominion over the earth justifies absolute do domination over other creatures. The biblical texts are to be read in their context. Um, I don't know how more in context you can read that, but it literally says that we have dominion over every creature that crawls on the ground. Literally, that's literally what it says. <laughs> so um, then he reads Genesis 2.15, which it says, I'm going to read it from the actual Bible. Um, and the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So God gave Adam, Adam the garden of Eden to take care of it. And so it says, um, Pope Francis goes on to say, tilling refers to cultivating, plowing and working while keeping means caring protecting, overseeing, and preserving. This implies a relationship of mutual responsibility between human beings and nature. Each community can take from the bounty of the earth whatever it needs for substance, but it also has a duty to protect the earth and to ensure its fruitfulness for coming generations. Now, the Bible doesn't say that. Um, in fact, after sin, Adam and Eve were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. So they no, they no longer had that responsibility of caring for the garden. Okay, so um, when he said you should read the Bible in their context, I think that he should also do that as well, because <laughs> he took he took a lot of stuff out of context to twist it his way. Um, and the reason why he is so hung up on it, like I said before, is because he created this encyclical for everybody, um, whether you're Catholic or not to read so that he can have a seven year plan to basically reset the earth and so that we can save it for future generations or pr prolong our life even and I think that is not biblical number one because we like I said before we know that this earth has to pass away so this stuff has to happen the bible says that it's going to be calamities he says it's going to be floods it's going to be earthquakes in different places this stuff has to happen. So for them to say, oh, it's climate change. It's not climate change. It's the Bible. He said it was going to happen. <laughs> so it's just a lot. Like, I just, I'm upset. Okay. I'm upset. And I'm upset that we're, you know, just buying into it, you know? So, um, the Pope talked about our common home. And I think that, that I showed you guys that video with the kids and how it's just it's it's too much for me you guys <laughs> but okay so we must for forcefully reject the notion that our being created in god god's image gives us dominion over the earth justifies absolute domination over other creatures like and that's another thing going like it's so deep y'all like i really wish that i could like really elaborate on it but this is a whole nother subject like nature worship and all of that this all ties into all of that Ladato C stuff. So who's rallying for climate change precautions? Why is everybody just like we gotta handle this right now or our earth is doomed for, for life? Because the Pope is in the background running everybody <laughs> for for I don't understand it. I just don't. <laughs> and I'm stepping all over my words because I'm just really like I just I don't understand. So I'm gonna show you why the Pope is in everybody's business because Number one, first of all, no, I'll play this video first and then I'm going to play another video afterward to further explain to you guys why he is the way that he is. Um, and it's because he's very popular in this time and it's a reason for that too. So let's get into this video right here. 
turned into an outdoor cathedral. It's like being at the Super Bowl. The style was different almost immediately. The thousands before him as he bowed and said, Mi quiero que voy. Pray for me. And suddenly there was a connection with people. That set the tone for this papacy. Not more so. people can actually relate to him. Absolutely. And bring more people into the church. Mm -hmm. more, more of a user-friendly public. Yes. <laughs> That's what we need right now. We've needed for a while uh, a renewed image, a renewed face of the church, and Pope Francis is giving it to us. The one man who is winning in every poll you look at, the Pope. His Twitter account, at Pontifex, ranks in the top five most searched words on the internet. Take a look. Look who's got his very own rookie baseball card, Pope Francis. Pope is even showing up on pizza boxes. Every trip he takes, Pope Francis has been met by adoring masses of the faithful. This week, he's been called a Catholic rock star. He's kind of a rock star, Time's Person of the Year, the cover of Rolling Stone. Now there's even a Francis fanzine. He's captured the imagination, not just of the world's 1.2 billion Catholics, but the world itself. I get it on the streets. I mean, everybody from the bartender to the cab driver telling me, uh, Cardinal Dolan, we love this guy. He's been called the people's pope. I the pope! The papacy is saying, I'm a follower of so-and-so. You see people going out and, and giving the rock star treatment and fawning and fainting and screaming and everything when a pope goes by. I mean, he's just a man. Humility has made the former Jorge Bergoglio a star far beyond the Catholic Church and became one of the most popular religious leaders of our time. You can't be a Catholic without acknowledging Pope Francis as the representative of God on earth. Chi retiene di poter avere un rapporto personale, diretto, immediato con Gesù Cristo al di fuori della comunione e della meditazione della Chiesa. Sono tentazioni pericolose, sono tentazioni dannose, sono, come diceva il grande Paolo VI, dicotomie assurde. Pope Francis has worked tirelessly toward a new world religion. I'm I'm a I'ma leave that right there. I am gonna play that video because he really is the person behind all of this. And as you saw, all those people worshiping him, like just just blatantly worshiping him. Um I find that I find it disappointing <laughs> to say the least someone saying that they are in the place of Christ. If you go against the Catholic church, if you, if you don't listen to the Pope, that's not, that's not only a temptation, but it's hurtful. It's harmful. <laughs> Y'all. And this is why he's so popular. I'm just, I'm just taking that. He, that is why he's so popular because he's relatable. He's probably funny. I don't know, you know, but people are just eating it up and I feel like as Protestants we should know a little bit better okay so if anything is coming from the Catholic Church the Pope himself that is not something that we want to follow I'm just saying because in the Bible it talks about the leper can the leper change his spots absolutely not so if you think that the Roman Catholic Church is any different than it was a thousand years ago two thousand years ago absolutely not they're not so Let's get into this other video, you guys. Um, let me make sure it's in the right spot. Because they talk about how um, they talk, they discuss the Vatican and what it really is, because I think a lot of us um, don't recall or don't remember that the Vatican City is an actual country and I don't understand how everyone is always running to him when countries don't be tight like that. Like, I mean, it's allies. I get that. But then it's also enemies. And America, if you know your history, America was America because the Christians, early Christians ran from the Roman Catholic Church. Like, so it's a lot, y'all. It's a lot. It's a lot. And I'm gonna keep saying it's a lot because it is a lot. But yeah, y'all. Okay. 
let's let's check out this um this video right here the capital of the catholic church home to the pope owner of impressive collections of art and history all contained within the borders of the world's smallest country conveniently circumnavigatable on foot in only 40 minutes just how did the world end up with this tiny nation the short answer is because mussolini and the long answer is fiendishly complicated so here's a simplified medium version the popes used to rule a country called the papal states that covered much of modern day italy it was during this thousand plus year reign that the popes constructed saint peter's basilica the largest church in the world and also built a wall around the base of a hill known as Vatican upon which St. Peter's stood. But the Kingdom of Italy next door thought Rome would make an awesome capital for their country and so conquered the Papal States. His nation destroyed, the Pope hid behind the walls of Vatican and conflictingly refused to acknowledge that the Kingdom of Italy existed while simultaneously complaining about being a prisoner of the Kingdom of Italy which, according to him, didn't exist. Rather than risk religious civil war by getting rid of the Pope, the Kingdom of Italy decided to wait him out, assuming he'd eventually give up. But religion is nothing if not obstinate, and one, two, three, four, five popes, and 60 years later, nothing had changed. Which now brings us to Benito Mussolini, the then Prime Minister of Italy, who was tired of listening to the Pope complain to Italian Catholics about his self-imposed imprisonment, so Mussolini thought he could score some political points by striking a deal which looked like this. One, Italy gave the land of Vatican to the Pope, and two, Italy gave the Pope a bunch of apology money. In return, the Pope acknowledged that Italy existed, and two, the Pope promised to remain neutral in politics politics and wars, on the off chance that, you know, Mussolini thought this might be a thing. The deal was signed in a new country, Vatican City was born, and today the tiny nation on a hill has all the things you'd expect of a country, its own government that makes its own laws that are enforced by its own police who put people who break them in its own jail. It also has its own bank and prints its own stamps and issues its own license plates, though only its citizens can drive within its borders, presumably because of the terrible, terrible parking, and as the true mark of any self-respecting nation, it has its own top-level domain. VA. But despite all these national trappings, Vatican City is really not like any other country. Hold on to your fancy hat because it's about to get weird. To understand the Vatican, there are two people and two things you need to know about. The famous Pope, the incredibly confusing Holy See, the country of Vatican City, and along with that the almost completely unknown King of Vatican City. But first, the Pope, who gets a throne to sit upon and from which he acts as the bishop for all the Catholics in Rome. Actually, all bishops in the Catholic Church get their own thrones, but because the bishop of Rome is also the Pope, his throne is special and has its own special name. Okay, so I'm gonna stop it there really, really quickly because it gets really deep. Basically, in a nutshell, but I'm gonna let y'all watch it, but I'm gonna just, you know, speak for copyright purposes because this is an educational video only. <laughs> it's for educational purposes only. <laughs> but yeah, so the Pope is the bishop on the Holy See. The Pope is the king of the Vatican City, the country, and he's also the Pope so he has total control the holy see is a business like it's it's a lot y'all i just i'm dumbfounded i really am but let's continue name the holy see every time a pope dies or retires there is a sort of game of thrones to see which of the bishops will next get to occupy the holy see so while popes come and go the throne is eternal and as such the name the holy see not only refers to the throne but also all the rules that make the catholic church the catholic church when mussolini crafted that aforementioned deal technically he gave the land of vatican city to the holy see which believe it or not is a legal corporate person in international law basically every time you hear the words the Holy See, think Catholic Church Incorporated, of which the Pope is the CEO. Now, back to the King. The King of Vatican City has absolute unchecked power within the country's borders, and his presence makes Vatican City one of only six remaining absolute monarchies in the world, including Brunei, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and Swaziland. The King's absolute power is why Vatican City can't join the European Union because only democracies are allowed. Though Vatican City does, strictly speaking, have a legislative branch of government staffed by cardinals appointed by the Pope, the King of Vatican City can overrule their decisions at any time for any reason. So why do you never hear about the king of Vatican City? Because though king and pope are two different roles, they just happen to be occupied by the same person at the same time, which has the funny consequence that because the pope is elected and the king is all powerful but they're the same guy, it makes Vatican City the world's only elected, non-hereditary absolute monarchy. It's this dual role that makes untangling Vatican City so difficult because the pope, depending on the situation, acts either as the king of the country of Vatican City or the pope of the Holy See. 
Got it? No? Okay, here's an analogy. Imagine if a powerful international company, say Gray Industries, had a CEO who convinced the United States to give one of its islands to the company, which then made the island into a new country, Graytropolis, with an absolute monarchy as its government, and the law that the king of Graytropolis is, by definition, the CEO of Gray Industries. It's pretty obvious at this point that the CEO should move his corporate headquarters to the new nation so that the laws of the country can benefit the company and the company's global reach can benefit the country. As for the man in the middle, Sometimes it's good to be the CEO, and sometimes it's good to be the king. That is essentially Vatican City. But if you're still confused, don't worry. Even other countries can't keep it straight. For example, the United Nations has the Holy See, the corporation, as a member, but not Vatican City, the actual country. And the Holy See gives passports to Vatican City. Okay, so we'll leave it there. You guys can find this video on YouTube, CGP Grey. Um, it's a very interesting video, for sure. Um, yeah, so... Let's get back into this other um, this other thing. So, like I said, the Pope is the king. He's the Pope. He's also the bishop. He's also he just he's just in control. So, my concern is, as um, as they are a small country, why are we going to them as a small country for advice? Why is the Pope the end all be all? And there is a reason for that, you guys. Um, if you go to Revelation, what is this? Revelation 13, um, just read the whole thing, but 15, 16, and 17, 18, <laughs> there are, there is some information and it says, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that many as, as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and on their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or his name of the beast or the number in his name of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred and three score six. Now, if you know anything about the Pope, then you know that they have actually the 666 on 666 on their little hat thing it's it's on there so i want you to go look that up because i cannot show you that today but um you will know what his mark is and all of that we're going to discuss that next week um because that is such a uh a topic that is uh, what's the word that i'm looking for <laughs> i would need a bunch of time to basically discuss it because that's like a deep deep bible study and right now we're just we're, we're skimming in the book but we're we're talking about it okay so yeah um so that is why he has all that power that is why you always see the president's going to visit him that's cr it's crazy to me it's crazy to me but that's what the bible says and so i believe what the bible says now the next thing that we are going to talk about is let me actually go back to the thingy. Sorry, y'all. Because I believe we got everything handled for the most part. How is it going to affect us as Christians? As I just read in Revelation, um, verse, I mean, chapter 13, those verses, it's going to affect us in the end because we are not going to be able to buy or sell or to do a lot of things because some of us are going to go against the grain i pray that all of us go against the grain um but the ones that go against the grain and do not jump on board on some of these things i.e climate change because that is one thing that is going to take us into the mark of the beast for sure um we're going to be persecuted we're going to be killed we're going to be uh shunned any th anything that you can imagine and worse um so that's how it's going to affect us if we are faithful um and what does this mean in the end that we need to get into our word we need to focus more on god we need to make sure that we are strong enough because i mean the lord gives us strength the lord gives us strength but we have to do our part by reading his word and just being rooted and what he wants for us um in our life and so i feel like it was more that i wanted to say yeah 
Oh, it is more I wanted to say. Sorry, y'all, because I wrote stuff down because the Lord, when he gave me this assignment to present this um, to you guys, I was a little bit apprehensive because you know how it is. Um, you never really think God is calling you to do do something. And so I'm being obedient. I'm walking in obedience um, this season because I want my spot in heaven. I really do. Like, I'm not letting no fear stop me. I'm not letting what other people think about me stop me. I'm not doing it. So I'm listening to God and I'm doing what he says. And so <laughs> the end time is upon us and God does not want us to get caught up in preserving the world. And I say preserving the world in the sense of, oh, we have to do all these things for climate change because it's going to be a time when uh, preserving the world is going to uh, conflict with God's word. And so like I said before, we know that this world is going to end and we know that we're going to have a new heaven and a new earth. So these things have to come to pass. So I don't want you guys to forget that. I want you to always keep that in the back of your mind that this earth is not my home. So them saying caring for my common home, my common home, this is not our home. We always say we are we are in the world, but we are not of the world. That reigns true. This is not our home. You guys, this is temporary. This is temporary. And so I'm going to end this video off in prayer. Um, for sure, for sure. But I thank you guys so much for, um, you know, sticking it out with your girl. I appreciate it. Next Friday, next Friday evening, by the Lord's will, we will be back in this thing, studying the word of God or whatever current event is coming. But I want to talk about the mark of the beast the next um study that we have so prepare your hearts and prepare your minds for that you guys but let's pray so that we can end this live dear heavenly father we thank you for this day lord i thank you for allowing us to come together um to learn more about you to know more about your word lord and how to apply it to these current events that are happening right now lord it's such a strange time that we're living in father but i thank you for allowing us to be able to see it I thank you for allowing us to be able to see your word come true. It's amazing. It's amazing, Lord. So I just thank you for that, Lord. I ask that you forgive us for all of our sins and our shortcomings, things that are not pleasing in your sight, Lord. I ask that you remove them. I ask that you renew our minds, Lord. Conform our wills to yours, Father. I ask that you continuously be in our lives, continuously guide us and keep us. Lord, these times are times for boldness. For your will and for your way, Lord. And I just ask that you just give us the strength daily to continue to walk in your statutes, Lord. Be with us and guide us and keep us, Lord. There's so much I want to say, Lord. And I just ask that you uh, have your Holy Spirit interpret the things that are on my heart. Um, the things that are on anyone's heart who is watching this live, Lord. I ask that you protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger, Lord, because you know that the enemy will be upset about this lord but i know that you are a strong tower and that anyone who calls on your name jesus that we will be saved lord so i thank you in advance for all the things that you're going to do i thank you for all the things that you've already done lord and i ask that you just continue to be with us continue to be with these studies father and lord please help us to bless somebody help us to bring somebody to closer to you father that's all i ask lord even if it's me even if it's me, Lord. So I thank you once again, Lord, for everything. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. That is the end of this video. So I will see you guys in the next one. Um, I think that this thing is going to do a live. It's starting, but I'm going to have to have to switch it. So let's go. Anyways, remember to keep God first and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.